We'll take questions for Avalanche forward Jonas Donskoy. Peter Baugh at The Athletic. Hi, Jonas. I guess what did you just kind of see on that on that first goal when Graves kind of whipped it in there? Oh, yeah. I was just, I was just trying to get to the net. It was good for take by Landy uh, to get the puck back, back, back to us. And, and uh, Graves with it to net, so I was just trying to get there and uh, trying to get a deflection. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Jonas, that's a good team over there. Uh, they don't quit. Uh, how were your nerves when they made it four uh, three there as a team? You think? I think, I think we kept our cool pretty good. Uh, we are a confident team right now, so uh, I was confident that we were able to to defend defend the lead to the end, and, and that's what we were able to do. But uh, obviously, not not our best hockey, especially especially the second half of the game. So we have to get better. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Yeah, Jonas, it, they, they get uh, a power play goal on the Kadri penalty, but otherwise, I mean, it was a really good kill. And obviously not giving two power play goals on that stretch was huge. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That was a, that was a massive kill actually at that point. So, so uh, you know, we've been, we've been working on our penalty kill a lot this season. We've had a lot of meetings and, and uh, trying to get better every day. And, and that was a crucial time to, to uh, only give them one goal. Brandon Crystal, KOA Radio. Giannis, was it one of those nights where you think, oh, I'm going to be the first star, I got my two goals, and then Nathan ends up getting the hat trick at the end there to snake you a little bit? Uh, you know what? It's, it's that, that, that time of the year that it doesn't really matter who gets stars or anything. It's, all that matters is wins. And, and uh, you know, huge game again uh, from our first line, so we need that. We'll take two more here for Jonas. Rick Sadowski, NHL.com. I just wonder what was going through your mind yet after they cut it to four to three. Well, obviously it was unfortunate, but um, uh, we just kept going. You know, like I said, like I said before, we are a confident team right now, and I was we all were confident that we were able to defend the lead. And and uh, you know, sometimes it's like that. You know, some nights you're not playing your best hockey, and then you just have to battle and and. Uh, you know, find different ways to win, and I think we were able to do that tonight. Last one here, Arif Dean, Mile High Sports. You know, speaking of Nathan, he's got five goals in the playoffs already. He only had one in the regular game. It's an easy question. Just talk about how great he is. How important is he? Did you guys hear? I didn't hear anything. Sorry, Arif, can you repeat that, please? Yeah, sorry. I said uh, Nathan McKinnon's already got five goals in the playoffs. He only had 20 in the regular season. Talk about how great he's been and just how important. Well, he's obviously one of our leading players. You know, like I said before, our first line has been massive this first first couple of games. So, um, you know, he, he I know that about him that he easily gets picked in the playoffs, and that's exactly what he's done here in these first couple of games. And, and five goals, that's you know, that's that's pretty pretty uh, pretty great. So we are happy to have him for playing for our team. All right, thank you, Jonas. Thanks. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche forward Nathan McKinnon, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Nathan, I guess why do you think you're able to turn your game to another level in, in the playoffs to such an extreme degree? Um, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know if I'm at another level. I just pucks are going in right now, I guess. And uh, I mean, but all my goals are with great screens in front. Um, you know, Landy, Miko, or Beast look down low, and you know, honestly, they, you know, without those guys battling and mucking it up in front when I'm up high, those pucks don't go in, and um, yeah, everyone's uh, helping out for sure. Michael Spencer, CBS4. And Nathan, that shot of your mom and dad in the stands uh, after your hat trick, what does it mean for you to have that type of performance and have them in the stands there to see it? Yeah, it's great. I mean, uh, They've been with me every step of the way. Um, you know, they're. Uh, I'm so glad they 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 got to get up here and um, see the playoffs. And obviously, I guess I keep showing them on TV. So um, I'm sure they don't really love that. But um, you know, I know they're really happy for me and for the whole team. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey Ned, I did, well, Nate, I don't know if you saw it, but on 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 the first shift, 
I think you changed, but Landy, he goes in there and just smokes O'Reilly in back of the net. That kind of seemed to set the tone, and obviously it helped lead to that goal. If you could just talk about that play by Landy. Yeah, that's what I mean, just uh, just a beast. Um, of course I saw it. I mean, I, I could hear it. I hear the, the hit. I hear the crowd reaction. Um, you know, without that forecheck, without that extra work ethic um, that he always brings, uh, we don't score that goal. And uh, great play by Landy and uh, great tip by Donnie as well. We'll take three more here for Nate. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Nate, you guys entered this game, uh, or the series, I should say, going 16-0-1 in your last 17 at Ball Arena. And you guys start off going 2-0. Can you talk about the importance of home ice advantage in the playoffs and, and having that confidence in the numbers? Yeah, it's huge. Um, we've been on a good run, um, you, know, you know, at the at our home arena, and uh, you know that wasn't a great game by us, though, by any means. We got the result we wanted, and that's all that matters in the playoffs. But if we're gonna win um, game three in in their uh, in their rink, especially, we're gonna need a lot better than that, and we're gonna need to come out with, uh, you know, I guess you know we had a great start tonight, a great 30 minutes, but they took it to us in the second half of that game, and um, we're gonna need a much better effort tonight. Andrew Knoll, New York Times. Yeah, Nathan, congrats on the win. I uh, wanted to ask you a little bit of a big picture question. I mean, we've seen the confidence rise, the expectations rise, but that's all from the outside. Can you tell us some things you feel that Joe Sackick has done uh, to create a winning culture uh, here in Colorado over the past few seasons? Um, I think he just made a great team. Um, you know, he brought in the right pieces. Um, you know, obviously we're in a cap team now and um, you know, we're, I think everyone's got the same mentality. You know, we want to win. Um, we'll do anything to win. We're a tight group. Um, you know, we, we hold ourselves accountable and, um, obviously Joe, uh, you know, Joe Bedsey are the leaders of that. And, um, you know, it starts from the top down with any successful organization, I think. And, you know, I don't think we're any different in terms of that. Last one here, Brandon Crystal, KOA Radio. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, sorry about that. Uh, Nathan, how do you keep this level for yourself and for the team without, I guess, forcing it or trying too hard, but play it to the high level? Um, it shouldn't be hard. I mean, we're just, like I said, we got all played the last 30 minutes of the game. So, you know, we need a response in game three, if anything. Um, obviously, we got the win. Uh, Gruby played amazing, made some huge saves. But, you know, we got to look ourselves in the mirror and for game three in St. Louis. and. Uh, bring a better effort, and, uh, you know, that's what we're focused on. All right, thank you, Nathan. <clears throat> we'll take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Jared. Um, I was just wondering what you, you thought of Nazem Kadri's hit on Falk and if this is a situation where you kind of have to be bracing yourself for a suspension. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just saw it on the replay on the teleprompter on the ice uh they ruled it a five minute major so i'm guessing the league's going to look at that um i haven't really seen all the angles of it and whatnot so it, you know they'll look at it and, and who knows uh, it's hard to sometimes figure out um you know what the league suspends guys for and what they don't so um we'll see what they come back with lauren jabara altitude sports Hey, Jared, I know you probably like the result of, of a win, but maybe not necessarily, you know, the last 30 minutes. Just what did you think about your team's performance tonight in, in, over the full game? Uh, loved our first. Did love, actually, I, I really liked the start of our second, too. I thought it was 3 nothing. I thought we had multiple opportunities to extend our lead from that. Didn't capitalize. Um, and then we stopped working and uh, stopped checking and started turning the puck over. Uh, very similar to game one, actually. And they got a little life out of it. And um, so they, they owned the second part of the second period for sure. I didn't mind her third, though. I mean, obviously, we're playing back and forth hockey at the start, and then, and then the five-minute major puts us on our heels. But penalty kill steps up. They get one off the rush in zone. They did a nice job, keep keep us with the lead. And um, yeah, so that's where we needed to be. And 
Uh, we get a big goal from Nate. They answer back. Obviously, I don't like the, the rush coverage on that goal, but it is what it is. The guys found a way to dig in and get the job done after going through the five-minute major. Uh, Nate got the guys together on the bench, had a little chat. So did Landy. And um, off we went. They answered the bell and, and, and get us a couple big goals for us. I know you said after last game, you know, after putting 50 shots on goal, you wanted more guys to crash the net, take away Bennington's eyes a little bit. How did you think of, of uh, your performance there, getting bodies in front of the net? John Scoy had two tip goals. Yeah, I thought it was great. And uh, Nate's goal at the end from up top, uh, Miku and Landy both break his eyesight as well as two of their guys. I mean, he had he, we, we scored tonight because we were able to get, get in his way a little bit and make it more difficult for him. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Jared, that uh, it it seemed like your captain uh, sparked you early again with that uh, huge hit on O'Reilly on his first shift. If you could just talk about that sequence that led to that first goal. Yeah, great start. Um, just gets in on the forecheck, you know, legs it out all the way down the ice, gets a hit, creates a turnover. We go into ozone play and we end up scoring. I think it's, I think, you know, that kind of set the tone for our first period because if you look at our four check in the first period, it was really good. Came up with a lot of pucks. Um, Raycoats didn't start um, as clean as I would have liked, but they got better as the period went on. And um, if, you, if you do a job breaking the puck out properly, you can get in on the four check, you know, more consistently. So I think that. Uh, you know, Landy kind of set the tone there, and the rest of our team followed suit for the first period. We'll take two more here for Jared. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, uh, Jonas Donskoy had a couple goals today, and uh, I think he had an assist. Ryan Graves was in on that first goal. Last year in the playoffs, all the talk was around the fact that depth scoring just wasn't really stepping up, but you got a lot of depth guys pitching in today. Just talk about how great it was to see somebody other than the top line pitching in. I mean, you, you have to have it. You have to have guys st um, elevating their game this time of year. You have to have different guys chipping in and, and making plays, and not just on the offensive side of it, but on the defensive side of it as well. So, um, you know, I didn't I didn't mind our depth scoring last year in the playoffs, though, either. I thought, you know, Kadri was putting up some good numbers. Burakovsky's putting up good numbers. So I don't know if that, that part of it is true, but... I think that you got to have it and, um, you know, to have guys chip in tonight and, and get on the board, I think is, uh, it, I mean, it's good. The guys are feeling good about their game and especially when we play the way we can in, in the first period, you know, I, my, my goal is to try to get our team to play a full 60 minutes uh, the way we came out in the first last couple nights. Last one here, Andrew Knoll, New York Times. Go ahead, Andrew. There you go. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Apologies for a big picture question post game, but I wanted to ask you about Joe Sackick. Uh, what do you think uh, are the things he's done or the qualities he has that have most contributed to you guys' big turnaround here? I know you guys have kind of arrived at the same time and really done a, an about fish. I just wanted to get your, your thoughts on, you know, in your working relationship with him, what do you think are the kind of the key points of, uh, uh, of this this marvelous turnaround you guys have had i think uh great communicator he's got a real good feel for our team um both on and off the ice and our staff both on and off the ice i think that he um has a has a, a real clear picture on what he wants our team to look like and and how uh, individuals and lines and, and, you know, our D, how, how they have to play to have success um, and what they sh what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, so that, that grasp of, of the way our team plays and the way our individuals play, I think, is really important. I think he's, he's a fair and, and honest evaluator of our group. And... Um, He's went out and, and found pieces of that that we needed. You know, over the last couple of years, we needed a guy here, we needed a guy there, and they've gone out and found the right guys. Him and, and their pro scouting staff, 
found the right guys to come in and, and, and make us stronger in areas that we needed to be stronger in. So I think that patient approach and building, uh, um, you know, when the time is right and uh, has really helped us. It's helped push us over the top over the last few years. I mean, every year we're adding guys that are making impacts for us. So, um, yeah, that's about it. All right. Thank you, Jared. Thank you.